So we're going to look now at the bisection method for solving an equation. Now the bisection method differs from some of the other methods we've looked at in that it doesn't so much increase the accuracy of a solution. What it does rather is decrease the size of the region in which a root can be found. So it's one of a class of methods called bracketing methods. It has disadvantage that it's very slow. In fact, it is the slowest of all methods, but it has the advantage that it always works. We've seen that Newton's method is incredibly fast, but sometimes fails to work. The bisection method will always work, no matter what. As long as the function is continuous and crosses through the x-axis somewhere, the bisection method can be made to work. So this is how it works. So we have a function and it crosses the x-axis somewhere there. So this is the route we're trying to find, the solution of the equation. We now choose on either side of it some value that has a negative value and a value that is positive. So we'll call that one A1 and that value B1. The importance of choosing values at either side is that one of the A1, one of them is negative and the other one has a positive value. So in this case we have f of b1 is greater than zero and f of a1 is less than zero. And because the two function values have different signs, one positive, one negative, we know that the solution must lie somewhere between a1 and b1. And the whole point of the bisection method is to keep making that region smaller and smaller and smaller. And we do it simply by taking the midpoint. So there's, I'll call it M, equals the midpoint, which is A1 plus B1 divided by two. And we check the function value at that midpoint. In this case, the way I've drawn it, it looks like F of M, the function value, is less than zero. Which means now we know that the function value, whatever, wherever it is, must lie between M and B1. So we've halved the area in which we know the root can be found. So we update this, so our, the next value, the uh, value at which it's negative, our A2 value is M, and the B2 value is the standard B value. So we simply update A1 and A2 to ensure, A1, A2 and B2, to ensure that one of them is always negative and the other one always positive, depending on the value of f of m. If it turned out the graph had crossed closer to a1, then we would change b2 to be m and a1 would stay fixed. I'll draw a picture of that so you know what I mean. I'll squeeze it up in the corner. So imagine we have our graph crosses here. We have a1 here and b1 there. The midpoint here, in this case, is positive. So we have to change A1 and B1 to become A1 and M. So in this case, A2 stays fixed, it's the same as A1, and B2 becomes the midpoint. And again, we have reduced the size of that region. And this is what the bisection method does. It just keeps on reducing the size of that region. And you have to do it many, many times to get accuracy. Generally, you get one decimal point for every three iterations. So you get to say 10 decimal point accuracy, you'd need at least 30 iterations, maybe even more. Whereas Newton's method will get you 30 iterations in maybe two or three iterations, if you're lucky. So there's the bisection method. Slow, but simple, and it always works.